What's up, everyone? Welcome to the tour, the Sports and Life podcast. This is episode number two. We're going to talk about some Formula One right now. And oh man, oh man, Silverstone was amazing. 2020 British Silverstone had one of the most intense finishes in a while. Everybody had their tires blowing up. So we had Botas, his tire blow up. We had a few other in the mid grid, their tires blow up. By the way, let's talk about Botas, Botas real quick. Valtteri Botas has to be the most unlucky te- unlucky teammate ever because his tire his tires blow up. Um, it, it's like he just never gets lucky. Hamilton has all the luck. And for those who don't know, Hamilton had his tire puncture um, the last lap, or the last lap. And he went the entire lap and finished the race over Max Verstappen with like, uh, I think it was like five seconds left. Um, and that's because Verstappen had to go at the pit before the last lap because his tires were looking in really bad shape. So he had to go and get his tires changed, which allowed Lewis to develop a 30 second lead. And that's all he needed. When he was driving it, the car looked solid. It looked like it was kind of still drivable. And granted, Lewis is the GOAT, the GOAT driver. So he was making sure the car was getting there. He got there, one in and three tires. Just amazing driving on, on his end to kind of make sure the car gets to where it goes. So you had Mercedes, um, Lewis Hamilton number one, Red Bull uh, Verstappen number two, and then you had uh, Ferrari and Leclerc number three. Um, those are people on the grid for the Silverstone race. Um, and... The good, th- the the one I'm gonna focus more on is uh, Ricardo and Ocon for Renault um, coming up fourth for Ricardo and sixth for Ocon. Um, that's showing like they're they're making some noise because you have McLaren also up there with Lando Norris, but if Renault can start getting to the top of um, the mid grid, they will be really 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 like good for someone like Sebastian Vettel to go to next year and help them get some podium podiums here and there. Uh, ne- but it, it just depends how things go because we do have McLaren also making really, really like great steps. But the one other thing I do want to focus on is um, my favorite like uh, driver, um, Alex Alban from Red Bull. He has not been having like a great races um he only had one good race so that's the beginning of the year and then he got spun out by lewis but other than that he's not been having a great year at all people say he's in a hot seat i think it's kind of premature you have to give him at least a year he's only been there like a year and a half a season um since he took over for ghastly he he needs a better car like verstappen is going to be an incredible driver one of the best Alban is not going to be that. Alban will not be one of the best drivers. So if you have Max taking a car that's kind of not working that well and putting podium put podium on himself every week, that's don't look at that as the car is good. Look at that as Max is good. So they need to fix their car and figure out what's wrong with it. I believe Alban can definitely be... Uh, third fourth here and there on podiums if he just has a better car so hopefully he kind of figures it out because i i want him to stay in formula one he's one of the best best drivers and i i just he's one of my favorite player uh, favorite drivers um the next thing i do want to talk about that is kind of a big deal is racing point i don't know what happened to their car but something is not right with any changes they made i don't know if they tried to do some aero changes or they're trying to do some power changes. Whatever it is, it's not good. But with this race, they only had one car on the grid. That was for Lance Stroll, who finished ninth. And his race was just okay. He didn't really do anything. He did get points for for being ninth. Other than that, he didn't really do anything in the race. Nico Hulkenberg, he was supposed to race for um, the second car. But something happened with the car, and he didn't get a chance to race, which sucks because he is also looking for a seat to get back into Formula 1. And this would have been like his proven ground kind of way to show like, hey, I still got it. 
I can drive, so somebody give me a seat. But it didn't happen. I feel sorry for the guy, but hopefully he gets another chance somehow. Um, we'll see what happens when um, when next week next week's race kind of goes goes on and see if he gets another chance. The next thing I would do want to talk about with Formula One is uh, Sebastian Vettel. They pretty much throwing him to the fucking wind. Like it's like you know you know when like when you put your two weeks in at work. And you say, like, fuck, I'm not doing this shit no more. And you're just going to start slacking off. You start talking shit about the company. You know, you just, you just, you just two weeks of a job you hate. That's pretty much what's happening with Battle. He's just out there just driving. He already kind of knows where he's probably going. He's already been, you already see pictures of him talking to different teams, um, different directors, you know, trying to get more information. So he already knows that. He's out. He doesn't care. So he's just out there just racing. He doesn't care if he's first. Of his last in the grid, all he wants to do is just go out there, fulfill his contract, get paid, and go home. You don't even hear anything from him. He's not even stressed. So pretty much a guy who put in two weeks for his drive. Um, and I, I kind of see his side, where it's like he, he doesn't want to compromise himself. But also, this kind of talks to the point where I've been talking, where if a driver is going to switch teams, especially end of the season, the team should be allowed to bring someone else in or do a mid-switch uh, dri- driver. At least be able to bring someone else, give him a chance, some young guy, you know, if someone's already given up, like Ricardo's given, let's not, he's not given up, but he's moving a different team. Um, Vettel's moving a different team. Maybe Bottas, you don't know. But he hasn't said anything, which is smart. But if everyone knows that we're not, this guy is not coming back no matter what. I think a younger, younger driver should get a chance to prove himself, or at least a driver who who was already on the grid should get a tryout to kind of see what he has, um, so that you know, so we can see what what they got instead of having someone just there being just not working really or not showing up for the race. But I don't want to be too pro company bullshit. Um, it's just what I would be thinking if I if I was running a a a um a racing team where I'd want just one race, just bring someone else in. It's a different story if they if Vettel was being um was placing at the top of the of the mid grid, but he he's just not trying at all right now. Other than that, that is Formula One right now. Um, definitely one of the best years right now, of, just for the racing. Overall, the points suck because we all know Lewis just running away with it right now. Um, but it is a pretty interesting race when you when you're looking at the races. They have not been just boring watching Mercedes going laps and lapping people. I do like the way things are going. I do hope that in 2022, we actually get cars that are competitive and everyone kind of starts at the same spot. Oh, I do want to add one more thing. So we have for Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas contracts coming up before 2022. I don't think they're going anywhere, but they are again up there in age. I think what will happen is they will both get contract extension because as a team they work well you have botas who is an is a really great driver he can win he can win you um races or he can keep um other cars from winning races he'll be number two and still play his role very solid driver and you have lewis who's one of the greatest drivers to ever drive uh, in formula one he's always going to be your guy who wins the races so they'll definitely keep them around. I think it'll be a short time, short term contract, where they'll keep them for about two to three years, and depending on how the new car performs, if they're still winning, they'll extend them. If they're still here and there, you know, they're winning some, losing some. I'm pretty sure they'll start bringing someone in, and I personally would love to see George Russell in a Mercedes, see what he got, because he is um, one of the up and coming drivers, but he's stuck in the Williams right now. And Williams is kind of going bankrupt, or they're losing too much money to stay afloat, um, unless they get a big sponsor. And you do have Aston Martin 
uh, coming back with more money, so they're not going to back them. So they need to find a way to get um, George Russell into Mercedes ASAP so that he can help the team. And that is Formula 1 for this week. We'll see it next week and see how it goes. I'll catch up with you guys in the next section. Peace.